Hey everybody, welcome to Rana's Radar. Today I'm in Knoxville and I am going to be showing you low-car automotive distribution. Now this is a massive, massive store, shop, factory, whatever you want to call it, but we're going to check out inside and see exactly what's happening because they are pretty large, very big. Um, it's all American made, American source, so I know you guys are going to love that, but we're going to go inside and see what's happening on the inside and the kind of parts you'd be able to get for all of your rides. Let's check it out. Feels like I'm in a um, showroom of just classics. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely brilliant. Anything you like? Oh, I like them all. <laughs> Absolutely all. Hey, Brian. How are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you. How are you? Yeah. I met Brian at the NSRAs earlier yes. this year. Yes, yes. Um, and I was just amazed you guys had done the C10, was it? Yes. Yep, there was the C10 truck, um, it was absolutely brilliant and I knew that I had to come by and have a look because it's in Knoxville, it's so close by <laughs> and the um, place is absolutely massive, it's all American made, American yes, ma sourced. American made, American sourced, lifetime warranty. Yep, a so. lifetime warranty, so I know a lot of these are out there are restoring classics, so we're going to have a look to see exactly what Loker has to offer. Um, Brian, what do you do here? I'm Vice President of Sales. So I we got to sell stuff. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, you're but, definitely the person to have here on camera with us. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, it's a small company. And we all do whatever we have to do to get the job done. And uh, we all love what we do here. We've got a lot of car people here. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We enjoy what we do. Coming to work every day is a joy. That's awesome. So this here we're standing is the showroom? Yes, ma'am. This is the showroom. It's got some of the collection. These are... Uh, some of Skip's and some of Debbie's cars. There's the his and hers roadster that we've had and taken around quite a while. And then we have... Uh, Skip is the owner, I believe? Uh, Skip was the founder of the company mm -hmm. and owner of the company. Debbie Walls is his wife. She runs the company pretty much day to day, every day. And then we have the his, hers, and theirs with the children that are running the company. And they're doing a killer job. I mean, usually second generation kids kind of skate. Yep. Uh, this second generation doesn't anything that's not in their vocabulary. They get up there at work every day. They bust their tails. Uh, it's a family run. It's a family run, very company. well run, wow. very well oiled machine. And it's, uh, I'm real proud to be part of it. I really am. And they do an excellent job of taking care of the employees, the customers. The standard's very high. Yeah. And it, uh, there's times where that can cause you some stress, but that's okay. It makes you better. <laughs> but uh, the standard's very high around here for a lot of things. As you can see with the cars, the showroom, the whole building, it's, it's, the bar is pretty high, which is good. We all have to, to work and strive hard to make well, sure that Well, that's what you happy. want because you know then he'll be looking after his customers. Yes. So this is all the family's cars, basically. This is, uh, <laughs> these three are Debbie's, the, uh, the 40 Ford in the background is Debbie's as well, and then uh, these three over here are some of Skip's. Skip's got race cars, and uh, a lot of the things that you see that low car has put on the shelf are, are because of these vehicles. Mm -hmm. As Skip built cars, he's like, ah, this would be a better widget, or this would be the better way to do mm -hmm. this, or I like that look, and it's how we've made products. It's how we've had a... Uh, this is pretty much a rolling R&D department right here. Well, it's an absolutely brilliant way to showcase what you guys do and to show the quality of the work that happens here at Locar. All right, Brian, where are you going to take me next? We've just, I've just walked through the door, so I mean, I could spend here all day asking right. about these cars, which well, I will. Can, yeah, <laughs> no, that's fine. We can do the cars, or you, we can run over, we'll run over, and I'll show you the production facility. And we can Let's come go back see the production facility. You'll, you'll see... Uh, the parts being made, and we can come back and show you what we see. Remember, I showed you this. Well, this is what that turns into, and this okay. is in the car. That sounds like a good plan. All right, we'll Let's walk over. The, the office you were just in and showroom. So that's the office and showroom. That's we were the office just in. and showroom you were just in. Then that's the R&D department where the race shop is. And the build, mo motors are built. We do a lot of that work, and then this is thirty thousand square feet where we do production. And there again, everything's sourced here locally. Uh, we've still got some connections to some companies in uh, california the only thing we don't do here is we don't stamp mm -hmm. and we don't do any coatings we okay. don't chrome plate that's all done in nashville tennessee by steve at advanced plating 
Yep. If you're ever over that way and want to do a, a cool tour, that place is amazing. State of the art. I mean, honestly, Brian, I'm so excited. I mean, I want to see how the motors are getting made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. Uh, if tra Travis I'm and Kevin about like the distribution as well, well. When you said you were coming later in the week, I thought, good, because yeah. they'll be back. They'll probably be back on Wednesday. And I thought, okay. oh, no problem. But, uh. Now, this is, uh. So I've, I've got. Um, my beautiful fancy glasses I've got on because eye protection <laughs> must be worn inside the distribution center. So let's have a look. <laughs> How it works for us, and I'll give you an idea, is that our boxes are made here in the United States. Our catalogs are printed here in the States. Uh, it's all done here. That's all I can say is we're, we hold on to that American made thing with both hands. Beautiful. This is works out with things the incoming out incoming doors right over here everything comes in there mm -hmm. gets put over for the the gang to use in production over here or set in different areas and then what happens is uh, the machine shop brings stuff in this is where it's all put together it's boxed or shrank or packed or whatever we got to do to get well, out the everything door. happens here everything happens here okay from a raw piece of material to a completely finished part it's all done here wow it's i don't a lot of people don't understand when we tell them american made and we stay on it it's you guys are american made 100 yeah. percent from start to finish oh joe good they got both sets to me yay yeah that's good there's two in each thing i've been waiting for two and a half years for them You can see the advanced plating stickers on the boxes. They do all of our plating. And these guys are out of Nashville? They're out of Nashville. Jolton, Tennessee. Uh, no, Nashville. Not Newport, Tennessee. But, uh... Well, I mean, it's so overwhelming because the place is huge. And um, it's there again. You can eat off the floor. Uh, it is very clean. Let's just say that. I mean, I don't think I've ever been in a... I know this is not a garage, everybody, but... <laughs> Still, for but a factory, a, it's very clean, very neat. For thousands and thousands of parts that go out of here, like these are steering wheel hoops for the car's steering wheels. So they're these, going for weld and be welded. Wow, steering wheel hoops, everybody! Look at that. And they're made on a, they're made on the last machine that made Huffy bicycle wheels in the 80s. Before they shipped all that off, we got that last machine that's been converted to roll those hoops. Wow. But, These will be, yeah. we take a stamping like this and it'll go to a, into the machine and get machined. Then we bend it, it'll go over for weld or it'll go to polish, anodize, and then weld it up. You'll see some over here. These are splines you'd use for a, a, a door handle or a window crank. It's just fascinating, Brian, that every single last piece of a car is here. We, everything that we make, to make shifters, yeah. to make dipstick cables, everything that we do is here. Dipstick handles, those are shifter knobs. Besides the crime stuff, everything else. Yeah, we pretty Building much... Building a car up from the ground. Yeah, well, we got pretty much... house All the low car stuff that you would need to build a car, we can do it right here. And there again, there's steering wheels now. That's after they've been coated and... and he stakes them and then they won't... That keeps everything from moving. So what is he doing there again? What that is, we call that staking. What he's doing is bending that aluminum and bending the steel into the aluminum so it won't move. So when you grab it and turn it, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Then after it's foamed, it even secures it even more. These are just, these are the few manual machines we've got. We run pallet changers on a lot of our, uh, the Haas machines. Most of it's Haas. That's a six axis machine. And right now you're walking through where the guys are on break. So what is happening there? Uh, I don't know what all he's machining today. It's got the trunnion in there, so I'm not sure. Might be doing an intake manifold or two. Then uh, I'll show you around here. Those are all the manual machines that we use. 
The six axis machine will do an intake manifold like you see over here. We'll get a raw casting in from Ohio. There again, everything comes from. We get a raw casting in and then it'll be machined from here. This is the base for an LS3. And then this would be the top if you want it to look like a 57 Fuelie. And that's all machined here. And that would be an LS Classic part right there. Wow. And that gets made here as well with one of the machines? The machines, uh, that machine does the intake manifolds. This one? Yeah. We'll show you some that are running right now. So it looks like it's doing something now. What is it doing now? It's idling right now. There's, it's, when you see the light flash in they're idling. He okay. just went to break and didn't want to run anything while he was at break. I don't know what they're, they might be changing tooling or okay. it's hard to say sometimes. Wow. We'll get you a few that are running so you get an idea. And we'll get raw extrusions in and then take an extrusion, it'll go from an extrusion of aluminum into a dipstick handle and nuts or it'll turn into, it can turn into a pedal or pieces of a pedal. We run bar feeders on all the, the lathes. This is the mill department here. These are steering wheel hubs. To give you a good idea, you're going from piece of billet aluminum to a hub. Look at that. And they'll have pieces that you use for setup to make sure everything's right. And this it's, is done by this machine here. Yep, and it's running them right now. This is different bar stocks. And things are messy because you came in on a Monday. Monday, the fur flies. <laughs> on Friday, we stop about an hour early and clean everything up. This is about as dirty as right, unorganized as it'll look. This is not messy. Look. This is not dirty. Mm -hmm. I can see you guys. Uh, the standards are very high here at Loka. What is this machine doing? That's now? a bar feeder. What that'll do is it loads the machine okay, this so we way. Okay, put the bars in through there. Yep. They'll load down the fall in here, it'll push it in, and it'll run. And it comes that, down here and then it goes into this machine. And what it's making are wow. those are shifter shifter hand nuts and what it does is watch yourself. So you can see them down in there. Wow, there you go. So it's what is the liquid? Uh, it's, it's a coolant and it's also lubricant, mm -hmm. but it keeps the chips moving and keeps things clean so you get cleaner parts. And if they keep that, you'll see mm -hmm. every one of these machines has that. Yeah, it's, I know We you. have, if you look up here, we've invested in, uh, oh, those are actually yeah. recovery, they recover it and send it back in. I remember when we worked in the old building before we moved here, I'd go home and my kid would give me a hug and he'd go, Dad, you smell like low car. It was because my office was pretty much out in a machine shop <laughs> and you smelled like that coolant, but now you don't really hardly smell it at all. Wow. But every machine, we made the investment to get a cooler for it or, or, or air return. You see, these are dipstick bottoms for an engine oil dipstick. Look at that. And we'll start off with a piece of bar stock. And then when it's... There's your bar stock. This is the material that it starts life as. And it ends up looking like this. This piece here will end up... Wow. So, isn't this where the finished product comes out from? Yeah, that's where it'll just shoots it out there. The guys take it. Yep. They've got the print, they've got all the calipers, check gauges, they'll check everything, make sure it's right. Okay. There again, when you give a lifetime warranty on everything that you make, you got to make sure it's right. Lifetime warranty. And so why was this one in here? It's just the finish of it's a just... bar, it just spits it out. Oh, the end of it, okay. Yeah, yeah when you get to the end of the bar. Easy. These are shifter bodies, they come to us cast, and then we take and have to make a shifter body out of it, which, when we're done, this is a shifter body on its way to go get coated.
That'll go out and get zinc plated and ready to go like that little gold one you see right there. Honestly, everyone, this is absolutely brilliant. I mean, I'm ecstatic. I am so high right now. I always want to see the raw stuff, how the cars get built, and it does not get better than this. I am interested in finding out where the bigger products are made, you know. Giving a tour. Stuff, so I think we're getting to it. I'm just impatient. What are you working on, Mark? It's absolutely Shift brilliant. Shift the parts. You can around me. And I love the fact that they've got oh, the coolers eight shift every parts. single machine. Good. So it's not like they've just started to certain parts. Down. Another part that can't be seen. But for every single piece that gets made and manufactured, they've got the coolers going to make sure you get the cleanest product. Now we're talking. What am I looking at, Brian? Uh, it's uh, part of our gate shifter. That's a finished one. That's been hardened and coated. This will be his check piece. So this goes in the gate shifter. That way you move it over. This yeah. piece moves. It's very advanced. Very computerized. The oh, machinery yeah. oh, yeah. as well. But it still takes, you got to have a good machinist to set it up yeah. and run it and check the parts. You don't want to make 300 or, or, or 1,000 pieces in a day oh, and find out they were wrong. Yes. another example of a we'll start off with an extrusion plate you know this will be what they call first stop they'll come through make all these change it up put it in the vise boom now you got a gas pedal arm yeah so it's here's the that's the extrusion that starts life as. See how that's angled? Yeah. You go from there to there. Right. It's amazing. You stop and think once more, where do they all go? Because <laughs> there's thousands of them, you know. Shifter boots. The shifter boot. What is this for? That's the a shifter boot bezel. Oh, for the shifter, of course. Yep. The base. We saw that man there. Good. Hands got, on to. We got people that are. really speaks of the quality. This has a. A lot of them will have a pallet changer. This doesn't have the changer going right now, but we can pull this out and change the material while the other one's running. Wow. We do that on, like you see over here, is a good example of that. It's, the machine's not running right now, but. They're doing a changeover to get ready to start whatever the next job will be, but they'll load this up, yeah. it'll start running, then they have one out here they'll be loading up. And they're gonna clean up that one. This one will get loaded back up while that one's running, then it'll just go back and forth. So all of these parts here? It's right here. It looks like it's selector shafts or transmissions right here. They started off like this, and off one will end up like this. And go in, that's off one right there. Can't all of these parts be reused? Yeah, these are vices. These are Kirk vices. This is the this is the actual part that they're making. Yeah, right no, I'm here. talking about this space. So, yeah, we recycle all that. Okay, right. Yeah, you'll see bends and bends and drums. And because if you've got all the machinery to be making the things, then... They run an auger in them. The auger will run like you see here. The auger's running. It's taking those chips. And it's just pushing it out of the machine. So it doesn't jam up the machine and everything gets... Okay. Up. How, you doing? How you doing, man? 
and you'll see there and then you'll have and then this will be then used as well I think it's sent back for recycle we recycle it for recycling you Brilliant. see there it's that's where they're that's the filter for the coolant yeah so they'll have to clean out the coolant bins every once in a while if we're running something that's a real fine cut that'll cut the crap out of you that's why they want you to wear glasses and stuff that can get pretty sharp right Like I said, this would be what we would consider dirty and unorganized for us. This is almost embarrassing for us. Wow, no. <laughs> we try to keep things extremely clean. Very well organized. This is why we like to keep it natural. If I had given you so much notice that I was coming, then maybe we wouldn't see everything in its full working order. So. No, it's a, we, we love for people to come in and see the machines running. It's, it just blows you away. It and really does, 100%. Now, there was a lot of all the parts that were getting made there, from steering wheel to the shifters to the nuts and bolts. So everything you need to make it happen. Not the engines. No, the engines are over in the other shop. Okay, so uh, we'll be going and having a look there. And once it gets made, this is the distribution place where it gets packaged. This is where we get packaged and shipped out, yes. Those are the instructions. We have our own instruction right around staff. So if he's got a question, you just go right out and do it. Wow, it gets wrapped, stickers get put on, and all happens here in house. Yeah, that's what we got. That. We bought a company called Made For You, and they do heat shrink all their product, and they have a different board than what we use, but it came with a lot of board, thankfully. We've had a hard time finding board. Okay. Now, since we're here for shipping, how quick to, can people get their stuff? It's not been good lately uh, with supply chain issues with chrome plating and different things that we deal with. We're, we're running about six to eight weeks back on shifters. Okay. But uh, it's starting to come around. Uh, but I mean, they're just there. They're getting made. Just they're there. getting made. Yeah. But then you got to wait for. There's a million little parts that go into it. And the problem we've got is we've got about fifty-five thousand different, or about sixty-five thousand different shifters that you could order from us, from four-inch levers all the way up to thirty-two inches that are double bends. Right. So if you have one, you might not have the other. If a guy wants a black knob, we might not have a black knob. We might be waiting on it to come back from anodize. Not making excuses. I mean, it is what it is, and yeah. it's that way for everybody right now. But the thing that we're trying to do is expedite it, make sure it happens, make mm -hmm. sure it gets done. The good thing we've got is our, our uh, the employees that are working here aren't short term. Mm -hmm. They have very long term employees. They know how to do it. They know how to do it right. Yeah. And that takes years to get to that kind well, of. Well, that gives you a leg up against some of the other companies who I, are I, on a rotation basis. With yeah, and I agree. And, and, you know, the, but. Uh, we just try to do it right, try to get the right parts in here, try and make it. We, we could take, we could have cut corners and went to China the second that mm -hmm. all this stuff hit. You mm -hmm. know, we could have moved this offshore and that offshore. And we're doing the opposite. We're bringing it in. And we're working harder and harder to bring more and more in. And yeah. Like I said, you didn't see any presses over there, like a no. full-blown, you know, press. We don't do anything like that. Uh, we, and we have little cells, like this little area here is all, all the shifters are built there. Every low car shifter is built right there. Those guys do it and they, they do it well. And this is dipstick area and pedal area. Well, I guess for good things you've got to wait, right? Yeah, it's unfortunately right now and we all hate it. There's nobody likes it, uh, especially in sales, you know. Yes. <laughs> now you distribute to but, wholesalers, not to the, uh, directly to the public. We don't directly to the public, no. We, we sell everything goes through, th we, we call three or four step distribution. You know, we've got the summits, the jigs, the speedways of the world. Uh, we've got the rocket down in Australia, I'm sure you're familiar with them. <laughs> uh, we deal with four or five companies down under there and then yeah. we've got uh, other companies in the, in the world we've got u.s parts of sweden we've got uh, hansen racing in the, the netherlands so if somebody did want to come and um, get something from you guys and support the business here in knoxville what would be the best way for them uh, the best way seriously we've got people in knoxville we've got components corners over there off of callahan drive we've got uh, a bunch of different like speed shop type things if you support your local speed shop you're supporting us because we support them we oh, spend the a tremendous shop, amount yeah. of money to send people to them and we're very proud of that we don't sell direct if you came here and wanted to buy something direct what if we did have it in stock and let's say we do you would pay full retail mm -hmm. where most of our dealers are going to save you a little bit of money a little bit of you know on shipping and whatnot mm -hmm. but uh yeah we've we've had We've been very blessed to have very good business partners, and they're all over the world. Yeah. And, you know, we went to SEMA 
I don't know, God, 30 years in a row. And last year and this year, the first two years we haven't gone. And uh, probably extended everybody's life around here another five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's stressful. It's, I've heard a lot about yeah, Sema. That, uh, that's it's, big, especially it's for a the rough vendors. One. Yeah, it's a rough one. But uh, there again, we've been blessed this year. We're not going again. We're too busy. We need all hands on deck right now. Yeah. And uh, it's such, the last six weeks would have been nothing but Sema. And then you go to the show and come back. Yes. So, you know, the show's the smallest part of SEMA. People okay. don't understand. That's the easy part. It's getting there. And it, we usually would, like, the guys would have been leaving this morning with the truck and trailer to go out. Yeah. And then the show doesn't start till Tuesday next week. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, it's it's a pretty big drain on everything. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Okay, Brian. And there you go. Now I do want to come and have a chat about one of these at least. Which one can you tell me the most details well, about? Because the, they're all brilliant. The cool ones, like I said, this was the 25th anniversary. This was the first, very first road tour car. Jerry Dixie drove this car all over the country. And then back in the day, they gave the car away. Well, Debbie saw this car and loved it. And a girl actually found the slip they call them blow cards in the magazine. Filled it out, sent it in, and won the card. Didn't know what it was or what. She just <laughs> filled out a card. Wow. Somehow Skip was able through the magazines to trace her down and get the car and acquire the card for Debbie because Debbie yeah. loved it. And then Debbie ran the wheels off of it. <laughs> uh, and then you speed ahead 25 years, they're going, hey, we're going to do a sister. Can we get some pictures of the old car? We want to make sure we get this and this. And if you look, there's very subtle differences. Like if you look at the stripes, it's... This is, we call this one the skunk. The black one's got silver stripes. They're both full fendered, but we tried to take what today's car would be, a take on where this car would be in 1995, this was state of the art, to take it to where this would be started, state of the art today, so to speak. It's beautiful. And then, it's absolutely beautiful. And this car is, and like I said, the cool thing about it is both bodies were pulled off the same mold. Wow. And the same group of guys built both cars. The same guy painted this blue car 25 years later, painted the black one. Wow, that's why they have it's, it's very really identical. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool the way they, the quality, you know, there again, that's a 25 year old car that's had the wheels run off of it and still holding wow. up and looks great. The, these um, fenders are custom, aren't they? No, that's that would have been a factory. These are fiberglass. These would have been factory this wide? Yeah, that would have been a factory fender. Now, this was, these are actually United Pacific just came out making a steel version of an original fender. And they sponsored this program. The hood and the fenders and the grill shell came from United Pacific on that program. Wow, even the front, like, this is stock, this would have been stock. The well. Yeah, the, the only thing they're missing is the bumpers. There would have been a bumper coming out. This has the Nerf bar, but there would have been a bumper that would have come across. There would have been a bumper that came across, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's just, it looks beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Then we've, I don't know how many years the... Reminds this, me of the Rolls Royce. We call them the his and hers cars. Yeah. The, the 32 3 one, if you look, the stripes or the pen flames are identical to the the Roadster. We'll just flip the colors on. Oh, yeah. So that's convertible. This is yeah, that's the Roadster, and then this is a 32 3 one. It's got a big block Ford in it, two fours. Everything's chrome. Wow, this is nice. It's been chopped, it's been sectioned, it's got a funny car type floor in it. It's cra this car's pretty crazy. Wow. Those interiors are absolutely beautiful. Most of them are Holcomb. I think uh, Holcomb, Most of them are what? Holcomb here in uh, Knoxville did uh, that one. The Roadster. This car. I, I just, like this one, Brian. What is this? He did these three. This is the 32 Ford Phaeton. This was... The Phantom? Phaeton, they call them. Phaeton. Phaeton. And uh, Skip wow. bought it. It had been a restored car and had won everything you could win. And the wow. Antique Automobile Club of America bought it, took the body completely off the frame, put a hot rod on, chassis underneath it, set it back down, and away it goes. <laughs> wow. But it's, it's a cool car. He had Holcomb do the interior in this. Move the bench seat back a little bit so there's a little bit more room for the guys because this was literally the one the guys had taken a trailer, pull out of the hot rod show, and that's what you went back and forth to the hotel in. It's, it's, it's I can't, I mean, it's just beautiful. 
I mean, you guys know that I do like the tea buckets and the Model A cars, and this is just like <laughs> to the extreme, modernized, taken to a whole new level. Brilliant. The two Goolsby cars are, are pretty much insane. When you look at the Camaro, when we, they were first building it, they were posting pictures of that Camaro in bare metal, and people thought they were lying, that it was too nice. And that was found in Arizona by uh, we're not a buddy of ours, it's Alex Bowman that runs NASCAR. His dad actually helped us find the car and get it back here. Sean Bowman was his name, and it's, but uh, that car is all steel. Everything on that car is steel. Wow. And with an all steel body, you can get away with putting a bigger block. Well, uh, but they got to do a lot of work to make everything, you know, like the, to do this chin spoiler down here, yeah. to tuck the bumpers like they tuck them. Oh, be harder with all steel There's body. so much things, yeah. But, uh, but it's, it's my understanding, right? When the, if it's an all steel body, then if you've got a good solid foundation, it's like anything else. Yeah. If you've got a good solid foundation, the rest is easy. Not easy, but yeah. makes it easier to build on. Yeah. And this was a really cherry. And you can sustain really, that bigger motor as well. Yeah, it can handle all that. That's not, yeah. this has a roadster shop chassis under it. That has a roadster shop chassis under them. So that they've been completely instead of uh, ladder bars or what, I'm not ladder bars, but subframe connectors and stuff. This is a complete chassis car. This is a fast track, and that's a Revo Beautiful. from Roadster Shop. We did the hood vents. That was a product that was developed for this car that we sell now. Okay. Those are billet aluminum. They just happened to paint them. Right, because they did come with um, grills on the hood, mm -hmm. um, the not, earlier Camaros, but not this one. Not like that, no. Not like this. No, they would look, they would look more like vents. <laughs> 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 this looks a lot better. There again, this car won, I think it was Muscle Machine of the Year. We'll look at the toolbox, 2013. And then the, the, the convertible, the 40 Ford convertible, we call it Lucille. That's for Debbie. This was the 2018 Street Rod de Elegance. I'll show you it. It's, it's an amazing car. The, if you've ever looked at a 40 Ford convertible, the top's kind of funky because it, it wraps around. They don't have back windows in those cars. Mm -hmm. This has a 47 Ford top with back windows. Oh, yeah. But all that, all you see, the, the, the bottom spoiler, the spoilers on the, the deck lid and all, that's all metal. See, I mean, I was not wrong when I walked in here and I said to myself, okay, it's like I'm seeing the winner of all the shows. <laughs> and it is. I mean, we can see trophies there, trophies here. These are show cars. These are absolutely brilliantly done. A1 class show cars. And you can tell from the trophies, good guys, Tri-5 Nationals, street rods. Beautiful. That's a 40 Ford with a 39 Ford Deluxe front end on it. I want to work in just to be around these cars every yeah. day, Brian. <laughs> we come out and wipe them off and give them a little love from time to time. With the chrome <laughs> plating work, the hubcaps are designed here, Kevin Ford. When they talk about second generation, Kevin can program, go in the machine, run it, put it in the package that it needs to go in, go up to Summit Racing and sell it to him. He can do the whole thing wow. from soup to nuts. And so and can his Skip brother. Sun. Yep, that's. Uh, Debbie's son is Kevin, and uh, Wanda, our purchasing agent, is, is Skip's daughter. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Skip and Debbie as Jeffrey, our, our chief operating officer. Beautiful. One big happy family. Yeah. It's be brilliant. The door handles are a new product that we developed after this. We call them the Lucille series. The gold you see in there is done by advanced plating. That's 24 karat gold. <laughs> and in the sunshine, it's insane. Wow. It's on the valve covers. It's in the dash. He did that for Debbie as a... Kind of as a, just a, a nod of thanks for everything, because uh, Steve does a lot of we do a lot of work with Steve. Steve does all of our chrome plating here at the work, at the shop, and then all the chrome plating for the cars, our shifters, all of our stuff. When you got to give a lifetime warranty, you got to have a really good business partner like that. Lifetime warranty. So tell us more about that. That's everything we make is made in the United States. Everything's made here, and then everything comes with a lifetime warranty. We stand behind it. You know, we realize. We're not so arrogant to realize that there's not going to be a part that gets screwed up from time to time or something doesn't fit properly. We'll just call our tech guys and we'll work you through it. Yeah. And we've been since 1988, and it's been a lifetime warranty since 1988. Wow. So, you know, had we been building junk, we probably wouldn't still be here, so exactly. to speak. Exactly, exactly. that's how I look at it. And uh, That's you know, the trust you've got in the product, and you've also got 
the confidence to know that if something wants to go wrong, you'll be happy to fix well, it. And we'll figure it out. And we want to know out. when something goes wrong, you might get a million questions from us and it's not being, you know, jerks about or trying to trip you up. What it is, is we're trying to find out what happened. Because mm -hmm. if it happened to you, maybe it happened to somebody else. Because mm -hmm. as you just saw, we don't build one at a time. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah. you got to make sure if somebody's got a problem, is it, are we going to have two or 300 people calling right yeah. away or, or, did, you know, or do we solve this right here? And we've been blessed. We've been blessed to have good products. We've got good quality control people. Our tech guys in the back, I've worked my resumes as long as your arm with Mickey Thompson, Mr. Gasket, all those places. That's the best tech department I've ever worked with. Wow. Those guys are the best. And. Uh, well, I know you guys are a happy bunch. I saw a few of yous oh, yeah. at the um, NSRAs earlier this year, so... We have a lot of fun of together. It, so. We enjoy each other's company. It's a good place to work. It's a lot of fun to come into work every day. And like you said, you walk through the doors, and these are the first things that greet you. It's, I know. It's, it's hard amazing. not to have a smile on your face. It's hard you know? not to. And I have a smile on my face. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> it's, it's hard not to have a smile. I'm going to take a lot of pictures, as much pictures as I can, because I never get the chance to be able to stand next to a car and take Just a picture take by myself, yeah. because it's always a show. There's always people walking around. But oh yeah, I'm going to take some pictures now. So that'll be up on my social media, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you need anything, Locar. Locar or any of our brands made for you, Locara, any of them, you can find them all at www.locar.com, L-O-K-A-R.com. I appreciate this, Brian. Oh, no, thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure, absolutely brilliant. And I will be coming back and filming Travis as well, so we'll put that in. Sure. To see exactly oh, that'd be awesome. how the yeah. motor gets made. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you. It. No, Thank thanks. You, sir.